everyone, I'm Tatiana, a DevOps consultant and cloud automation expert. If you are here to level up your skills in DevOps, Kubernetes and cloud infrastructure, you are in the right place. Because today we are diving into a question that more and more teams are starting to ask. Is Kubernetes overkill? And maybe more importantly, why do we keep spinning up clusters for things that don't actually need them? Let's start with this. Kubernetes is powerful. Many of us use it daily and it solves real problems. But let's not pretend it's always the right solution, because sometimes it adds more complexity than it removes. So, let's talk honestly about when Kubernetes fits and when it absolutely doesn't. We've all seen it. Teams reaching for Kubernetes when it's the wrong tool for the job. It's like lighting a birthday candle with a flamethrower. Yeah. Here are a few real-world examples. Example 1. The static site. A simple marketing page, no backend, no database, just HTML and maybe a bit of JavaScript. And yet, it's deployed in Kubernetes with ingress, autoscaling, Prometheus, the works. It's like renting a crane to hang a poster. You don't need Kubernetes, just throw it on Netlify or S3. Done. No cluster, no crying. They are fast, cheap, reliable, and require zero YAML therapy. Example 2. The monthly monolith. One app updated once a month. No scaling, no reload drama. It just runs. But somehow there is a Helm chart, a cluster, and half a dozen manifests. Why? A basic VPS and Docker run would have done the job. Fewer moving parts? No cluster to babysit. Example 3. The small team with a big cluster. Two or three devs, no dedicated platform engineer, no one watching metrics. But there is a cluster anyway. Pods crash, Argos out of sync, PVCs break, and no one's watching. Nobody's sure if this is platform engineering or just chaos with better branding. To be fair, Kubernetes has its place. When it fits, it's amazing. Let's look at a few scenarios where Kubernetes actually makes sense. 1. Complex service architectures. You are running multiple services, each with configs, secrets, health checks and deploy flows. You need orchestration, service discovery and scheduling. Kubernetes was built for this. 2. Dynamic scaling and resilience. You are dealing with traffic spikes. You want self-healing. You want the system to recover before you even notice something's wrong. That's Kubernetes at its best. 3. Platform engineering. You are not just deploying apps. You are building an internal platform with GitOps, Argo, Helm, policy as code, and a team that actually understands it all. Here, Kubernetes gives you standardization, control, governance, and scale. But here is the thing most of us learn the hard way. Kubernetes doesn't fix your problems. It distributes them. If you had no observability before, now your blind spots stretch across nodes. If your CI-CD pipeline was fragile, now it's fragile and containerized. If no one could debug a crash before, now it's hiding behind layers of abstraction. Kubernetes is powerful, but it amplifies whatever's already in your system, good or bad. So, ask yourself honestly, do you have a DevOps or platform team to maintain the cluster? Are you running 5 plus services that truly need orchestration? Do you require auto-scaling, self-healing and complex rollout strategies? Are you confidently using tools like Helm, Argo, Prometheus and using them well? Can your team debug pod crashes, PVC issues and weird networking glitches? 
if the answer to most of those is not really, then maybe Kubernetes isn't your next step, and that's totally okay. There is no shame in choosing something simpler, especially when it works better. We've got great alternatives. Docker Compose plus Systemd, ECS Fargate, CloudRun, Render, Heroku, a good old VPS and some solid CI CD. Sometimes the best tool isn't the most sophisticated, it's the one your team actually understands and can support long term. Let me be real with you, Kubernetes is not a badge of honor, it's not a maturity checklist, it's just a complex, powerful tool and it only makes sense when the problem truly calls for it. If it helps, great. If it doesn't, skip the cluster, skip the chaos, move forward with something that fits. Don't build a space shuttle when all you really need is a bicycle. If you enjoyed watching Kubernetes get gently roasted, hit like, subscribe and join our Discord if you are into no BS cloud conversations. Got a story? Drop a comment. What's the weirdest project you've seen running on Kubernetes? Thanks for watching. Take care of your systems and take care of yourself. See you soon.